Hey, look, leaders. Uh, what we're going to get into today is a planning and preparing session. Now, this planning and preparing session is dedicated to you getting ready and getting up and going with the interviews that you have booked in. So we're going to unpack a few concepts that relate to doing interviews, as well as a few principles that I'd recommend following to maximize how uh, efficient what you're efficient what you're doing is. Okay, we're looking at speed and increasing that. Okay, so what we're going to do is focus on creating an interview template first, unpacking the types of questions that you can ask, uh, and then look at how we can fill this template with information. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is log into your Parkbench site, okay? And you're going to navigate to your control panel. Now, your control panel is the back end of your site. It is basically where uh, all the things go on on your site, but it's only viewable by you, okay? Now, specifically, when we're talking about interviews, what we need to do is click on the tab that says interviews here on the left, okay? That is going to take us to where we can actually get started with these templates. So we're going to click on interviews on the left, and we take into this page, which says interview forms. These are the different forms and templates that you can use to build your interviews off of. Okay, there's lots of different ones there. However, we've got two rules here that you want to follow. Number one, make sure to choose the template that is most applicable to the person that you are interviewing. If you're interviewing a business owner, do not choose police officer unless they are also a police officer. And you want the interview to be focused on that. If they are a principal of the school, don't choose mortgage lender. It just doesn't really make sense. Okay, so choose the one that's most applicable. However, there is one thing you want to bear in mind, and that is that if you want to have a business profile page dedicated to the person that you are interviewing, you've got to use the business owner interview template. Okay, so those are the two things that I mentioned before. Uh, so number one is choose the one that's most applicable. However, if you want to have a business profile page dedicated to the person you've interviewed, in addition to that interview, you've got to use this one because we'll set them up with a user account and profile as soon as you click post. Our system is automated to do that. Okay, so let's go into that business owner interview template because that's most likely going to be the interview that you're going to do. Okay, now I'm going to start from a completely blank slate because I'm going to show you how I can fill out all this information at just about any business. Okay. And I'm going to use my favorite tool, which is social media to populate this. Okay. So we're going back to zero on all these different fields. So it's nice and empty. Okay. Cool. So when you are doing an interview, obviously you have to have this booked in first. Okay, you're not going to start setting up templates for interviews that you've not got booked in because potentially that interview might not happen. Okay, so let's get on to a little bit of how to find businesses and specifically the information that you, you want for this template. Now, a common thing that I talk about in my lead list creation and booking interview sessions is using Facebook as a tool to book interviews. I think it is a terrific tool. I would highly encourage it uh, to be something that you use to gather this information, but there are other options out there. Okay. Let's go with Facebook. Now, what we're going to do is search for the name of an area, okay? Because this is a common way to find businesses. So, say we are looking at Charlotte NC, okay? I'll have to put NC on there just because I'm based in Ontario. And so, if I were to search Charlotte, it might come up with an area in Canada or closer to me rather than the one in North Carolina, okay? But if you're in North Carolina, you wouldn't have to put the, the state there. Okay, now once you search this on Facebook, you're going to get given a lot of information, right? Information about groups, about business pages, which we're kind of looking for, sometimes events and individual posts. To streamline this process and make it easy for yourself to find the uh, business pages specifically, what you're going to do is ignore the all section and click on the section that says pages. Now, what this will do is it will categorize all of the Facebook pages that relates to your search for a term. Okay, so you can see we've got, uh, you know, the county sheriff's office, the fire department, we've got radio stations, uh, we've got a few other businesses on there as well, like restaurants, lost dogs, cats and pets, etc. This is where you can find not only people to interview, 
which we talk about in that lead list creation and booking interview session, but you will find information that you can fill out this profile with. Okay. So let's scroll further down and let's see if we can find a business. Let's go with, with Basil. Let's see if this is like a, maybe less of a chain, an individual business. It looks like we are here. We've got one. So this is a Thai restaurant. Okay. Now, what you would want to do when you have booked in an interview with, with say, Basil, what you're wanting to do is gather a few bits of information. We're not going to focus on the followers or the reviews. We would have checked all that when we were booking an interview with them. We want to get the logistics from this business, starting with the name of the business. So what you're going to do is copy the name, and you're just going to paste this into the business name section. Okay? Nice and simple. Now, you might not have Charlotte, North Carolina on there unless they specifically want that. You might just keep it as Basil, okay? And maybe even put in Thai cuisine, all right? Now, the next thing you want to fill out is the business address. Another thing you can find on Facebook. Over to the right side of the page, it will usually have a little map as well as the address here. Now, when you are copying the address, what will happen is that it usually shows the number of miles uh, or distance you are away from that business. So when you're copying this, it's going to mess up typically when you're trying to paste this into a Google tracked uh, address. So what you can do is just delete this off and you'll usually have your result there. Just get rid of the mile section. Fantastic. Now, the other thing you want to bear in mind when you're adding addresses in there is that sometimes, say you get this information from the person directly, they are advertising their home address because they are a photographer. They don't have a business address, they just have a home address, but they don't really want to advertise that. So if that's the case, just tick hidden address and it will remove it from the template. Okay, but for a restaurant, we'll probably want to show that one. Awesome. So next up, we've got business phone number. This is an optional field. It does not have a red star next to it, so that means it's open to being filled out. You don't have to fill it out, but most cases it's worthwhile, particularly when the phone number is right below the address on Facebook. So just grab this, copy it, and paste it in here. Awesome. We've got three fields so far. Let's keep building on this. Business category. Well, you probably know what they do uh, by the time you've had a look around their Facebook page or even when you're reaching out to them. Um, so you can pretty much just type in what they offer. Okay. They might even have uh, specific categories of food that you can add on there too. Now, the neighborhood, you choose the one that's most applicable. If you have one neighborhood, pick that one. If you have uh, multiple neighborhoods, choose the one where the business is located. However, if you don't have a um, site that highlights where this business is located because they're outside your area, that is A-OK. -okay. Just simply choose the one that's closest to it and then move on. And I'll show you how to override that later on. Awesome. So now we are at the optional field section business images, websites, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, et cetera. This is where most people will just go, nope, I'm done. I did all the stuff that I need. I can fill out the, the name of the person, their email address, their position later on. Um, I can just leave this stuff for later or I'll have the business owner do it, which is true. You can. However, if you think about what you're doing, you're wanting to present the most refined finished article in both the interview as well as the profile page possible. So make sure then that you're putting some time into this. It only takes a few minutes to find this information. I'm going to show you how today. So let's start with the business image. This is going to be their image for their profile on your Parkbench site. So the way to find this image is to navigate to Facebook. And then what you're going to do is click on their profile image up the top left here. Don't go and try and search for the ultimate image that you can find for their business because realistically, if they are happy with this image on their Facebook page, which is in front of almost 3,000 people, they're probably going to be happy with that on your Park Ranch page as well. Plus, they can always change it later on. So to take this image, what you do is you click on it and that'll open up a new little sort of window here, as you can see. And then you, if you're using a mouse, right click, or if you're using a Mac, two fingers, pushed on the trackpad at the same time. And that'll give you the option to save your image. Now, once you save this image, what you'll be able to do is typically it will download at the bottom of your screen. And what you'll be able to do is effectively drag this image that you've saved down here up to where it says business image. 
And what's happened now is that we've got a business profile page image for them and it's one that they're already using so they're probably going to be pretty happy with it. Now as we go further down we've got some other sections that we need to uh, fill out. These ones here that relate to their social media and websites. Their digital presence. Well we already know their Facebook page because that's what we've been using. So to find their Facebook page URL you just go back to this page here like you saw when you initially logged onto it and grab the link at the top. That is all you need. Done. Now for the websites, more often than not, you'll find that on the right side of the page here by the phone number. So you can take this page, and put it up to that space. But one pro tip, sometimes they will put a website in there that says, you know, www.eatatbasil.com. However, that won't actually be the URL. So just click on it just to make sure, because you can see that sometimes the URL changes depending on what they're offering, okay? If we would have put that URL, you can see that it comes up with lots of options. We're specifically interviewing the one in Charlotte, not these ones down here. So we can choose the Charlotte one and then take that URL. So that's just a little pro tip that a lot of people don't usually notice and they end up putting up a website which just adds an extra click for the visitor. Great. Now, where you're gonna find the, you know, the Twitter pages, the uh, Instagram pages, etc., is a little bit harder to find initially. But there are a few things that you can do to check. On their Facebook page, if you click on the About section, most of the time you can find their website as well as other social media links in here if they wish to highlight them. Not all businesses have these pages or uh, want to highlight them. So that's okay if they don't have it. What you can do though is jump onto their website like we did before, and you can look in specific areas of a web page. Now, more often than not, a website for any business, right, or service is relatively modern and they will have been designed in a certain way. Okay, it's where your eye follows when you come onto a website. Now, what happens is that typically the eye focuses on the top left corner of the screen, right? And then what we do is we log onto a page, we look at that, and then we come slightly down into the middle, but then we scroll down. So we're kind of looking at this area where it says refined Thai and further down. And we keep scrolling down. We don't even really look over to the right until we get down to the bottom of the page where our eye moves from left to the right side. Now, where you'll find a bunch of relevant resources for you is in this area. You can see that there is a symbol for Twitter, uh, as well as Instagram here. These are a little bit older icons, but you can use these ones as well. So we've found their Twitter page. All we need to do is click on this, and you can see that we've got that Twitter page popping up here. Okay, so we're gonna take this, copy it, and we're gonna put that into the interview template. Now we're gonna do the same thing for their Instagram page. It's over here, you can see the little Instagram symbol here. Don't worry about Google Plus. Google Plus is now a, I think, business to business specific platform. It has changed from being a, a public platform just because it just never really kicked off. So you can grab that here and you can see the post that they've got on there. So this one here looks like it's focusing more on an area rather than the business itself. That's why you're getting a lot of posts that aren't related to uh, the business. So potentially, if you wanted to just leave this one, you could, or you could type in Basil and then type in Charlotte and see, and just see if something comes up, okay? Sometimes it'll just show you an area and it might not actually be a page, and in that case, you can just delete it or X out of that tab and move on, okay? Because the goal is to do this quickly, all right? Now, the next area that your eye will go is past all this information here where you see you've got contact us, et cetera, and it will go up the right side of the page. And as you scroll further up to the right, Sometimes you'll find up here, there are social links, um, such as Facebook, Instagram, et cetera, if they're not down at the bottom. Uh, but more often than not, you find other information that people would likely look for, such as the menu, okay? It's also uh, where you'll find pretty much on 99% of sites that allow you to buy things on the site, the checkout icon, okay? And that's there by design. Marketers have found that people do that U shape. We start in the top left corner, you look down, you go across the bottom of the page and all the way up to the top. And so they put information in those areas that are relevant for you to find out, okay? 
So we can see here on this one, we've got the area, so we can change this if it's the wrong restaurant. A little bit about it, phone number, scrolling further down, a little bit of history, which is good, a positive review, social media links, another positive review. If we scroll further back up, we've got the menu there as well. Okay, if this is on Amazon, you'll find that there's that checkout icon, so that way you can buy it now. Okay, so that's a little tip for when you are using websites to find the information you're looking for. Great. But after this, what we can see here is that we've filled out a pretty good business profile page. Say they're interviewing Matthew, KUT, his email address is Matthew at parkbench.com, and his position is client success manager. You've got all that information stored in that space. Okay, so it's all highlighted here. Now, the next thing that you'd really do is go on to planning your questions. Now, I always get the question, what's the best question to ask in the interview? It really depends on the interviewee. What makes this effective is not the questions uh, necessarily, it's the answers that are provided, okay? And you might ask the same question to multiple people, but you'll get different responses, okay? So what you need to think about then is that when you are uh, doing this interview, more so stick to those principles like I mentioned at the beginning, okay? First principle for your interviewer in terms of what to ask, you focus on what does this person do? Okay, you need to make sure you're highlighting their business, so what does this person do? The second question is what does this person uh, like or what are their interests? And then the third sort of component of this is you wanna focus on what does this person need? Because if you're focusing on what do they want, or sorry, what do they do, what do they like, and what do they need, well then you're gonna get a good understanding of what the business does. You're going to learn a little bit about the individual, but you're going to be able to find out ways to help them and better serve them as a uh, sort of business owner and person in their community. So let's actually put that into some questions you might ask. Okay, so what do they do? Maybe we ask two or three questions about that. You know, you could ask something like describe your business and why do you choose this profession? You might even add on something like what's something that most people don't know about the business? It's a good saturation of business focused questions if you're only asking say five in total. Now, that's the first three. A question that's focusing on maybe what they like or what their interests are could be, what factors made you choose this neighborhood or how long you lived here? Or maybe even what's your uh, you know, favorite thing about the area or favorite restaurants in this space. These questions are quite useful because not only does it create a plug for the community, but it also, allows you to highlight or have other restaurants and have other businesses highlighted there, which you can then take that interview and talk to these businesses and say, hey, you're actually mentioned in this article I just did with this person. They raved about your business, so I'd love to interview you as well. Okay, so having a little plug in there for those businesses and restaurants in your community is really valuable. But the last element, because we talked about what do they do, we talked about what do they like, let's focus on what do they need. So a question like this, what are your goals over the next year? This is wonderful to ask, right? Because you can learn about how you can help them. Now, a lot of people will say to me, oh, well, the impact of COVID-19, you know, should we really be asking this question? Absolutely, they are a business owner just like yourself. They have challenges just like yourself and your business. If you can find ways to help them with those challenges, well then that's really gonna do wonders for that relationship. Now, they're not gonna get too doom and gloomy in the interview especially when you focus it on what are your goals over the next year. Whereas if you were to focus maybe more on what are your greatest challenges, then you might lead into something that's a little bit more negative on paper, but still particularly relevant for the interview. Because people find that stuff interesting. They wanna know what, what make businesses tick and people that run them. So ask them what are their goals over the next year. And if they tell you, hey, I need help with this, I need help with that, I'm looking to do this, I wanna achieve that, I wanna expand into this area or do something, what you can do then is that after the interview, bring it up and say, hey, I know that in the interview you mentioned that you were wanting A, B, C, and D, whatever it is. You can say, hey, I actually know someone that can help you with that. Because if you do, connect them with you. Get into your phone and say, cool, this person can help them. Here you go, here's their phone number. And what you'll essentially be establishing here is a stronger relationship with both those parties the potential to make one, if not both of them business in the short or long term, 
as well as help them achieve a, a goal that is personal and professional. That is going to be brilliant for that relationship. So look at how you can connect others together. You really want to be that go-to connector. This is how you do it. You have to find out what people need and then you bring them together with what's going to be relevant to them. Awesome. Now, this is a little bit more about planning and preparing. We're not really going to get into step three because this is more about the summary, okay? And like the, the final touches here. But one last tool that I want to show you, which is going to save you time, is actually two, is I'm going to go into help.parkbench.com, so our help center, uh, and search for this link, which is information to send to the interviewee before the interview. Now, this is relevant for any interview you do. You want to be sending them the questions. You're not out there to do some sort of hard-hitting journalism to sort of tear their business down. You're wanting to do the opposite of that. You're wanting to build them up. So transparency is key making sure that they are up to speed with what's going to be asked and have ample time to repair, prepare if they need it. So a simple email like this. Hey, I'm glad you're interested in being featured on parkbench.com forward slash Liberty Village to help the interview flow better and to give you actually more time to prepare. I provided a couple of questions that I'm planning on asking. Hey, however, I might add on a few others depending on what we talk about. This just really gives you the opportunity to feel more comfortable with what we're doing. Then you put your questions in there. Okay, five to 10 is really the range. Anything more than 10, it's going to be quite a long interview, which is fine, but just bear that in mind. And anything less than five, it's not really an interview. If I were to go in and meet someone and say, cool, we're gonna do an interview, and I say, describe your business, and they gave me a brilliant answer, and I say, wow, that's really cool, where are you originally from? And then they say, you know, that they're from somewhere far away or lived there the whole, their whole life, and then I say, great, see you later. That's not really an interview. Okay, so make sure you're including at least five questions. And even highlight as well that if there is other elements that they would like to discuss, tell, like they can tell you that. But the way you want to word this is by saying, these are the questions I'm going to ask unless told otherwise. Okay, because if you were to say, hey, are these questions okay? And then they don't get back to you for ages and your interview's booked in next week and then it gets to the day before, you still haven't heard back from them there's going to be a little bit of anxiety there. It's like, hey, is the interview actually happening? So instead say, hey, these are the questions that I plan on asking, right? This is just to give you some more time to prepare. However, if there are other questions that I kind of think of during the interview, I might ask those. But if there's other areas of your business that you want to highlight instead, let me know. And I can totally change that. Just send them through to me before the interview. And then put their fears at rest. Rest assured, if you don't want something published that we discuss in our interview, let me know afterwards and I can remove it. It's not an issue. You also have the option to actually edit the interview after it's published on the website too. Okay. So that's really the core elements there. Then you can put in the date, time and location for when that interview is going to take place. If you're doing this remotely, say over Zoom, because your area is still uh, under lockdown or it's starting to open up, but people just prefer to do it over, over Zoom or, or Google Meet, which is a new one. Uh, feel free to put the link to that meeting in there as well. So this is a really great email to send. Now, as you do more and more interviews, you don't want to be writing out this email every time or trying to find the last one you sent and copying and pasting it in there. So let's look at a way to streamline this process. Now, what you can do is use uh, an extension, right, called Georgius. I hope I'm pronouncing that right because I've been saying that that way forever, uh, but it's Georgius. And basically what happens is it is a system which allows you to create templated emails. Okay, plus it's free. All you'd need to do is type in Georgia's Chrome extension in your uh, Google Chrome browser, and then click on this top one here, email templates for Gmail. And what you can do is add this to Chrome, and it will appear as a little G in the top right corner. But basically what this does is it allows you to write up, and I'll show you some of mine, emails uh, that really save your time. You click on new template and you choose the template name. So say it's nice talking to you or maybe booked interview, okay? So you write in the template name, but you've also got this option for a text shortcut. Now this is where it gets really valuable. So when you open up an email and you've got this template already made, you can type in just a few strokes of your keyboard and then press tab and it will automatically trigger this email populating for you. 
So say I type this in as booked. If I were to create an email that said booked and then press the tab key, it'll automatically populate an email for me. Okay, so I'll show you an example. Uh, if we put all this information that we've got here into the space, and maybe the formatting might not be the best because we'd probably be better suited to write this out ourselves. Say we've got all this information here and then click save. When I booked interview, because I've already got one under booked. Cool. When I click save template and I open up my Gmail, which I'm going to do in a second, uh, what I'll be able to do is show you how this will actually pop up and appear for you when you're creating a new email. It's really, really beneficial. So I'm going to give you an example of that in just a moment, just setting this up on another screen. It's just loading through, but we'll have this ready to go in a minute. And for those that are online live, feel free to fire away any questions that you guys have got while I'm getting this ready. My computer's just going a little bit slow because I've got so many tabs open. Almost there. Cool. There we go. Awesome. So I'm just going to change my screen share here to this one. So here we go, we're on Gmail right now. And what you can do is type in those keywords that I put in there. So I changed that to booked interview. When I click tab, that entire email populates in front of me. It saves you a lot of time. Okay, so all I did was I typed in a specific phrase. So booked interview was the phrase I selected. Press the tab key and automatically this populates for me. You can even go as far as to make sure you're adding in your URL, choosing the templated questions you typically ask, and then putting in the date, time, and location just manually there as well. There's also a section here on Georgius, which if you go into it, uh, it will allow you to, once I open this up again, and click on Georgius, what it will do is it'll allow you to add in variables. Now variables are when it automatically populates the first name listed with that email address if they've done that. So you click insert variable and type in first name. Now, when I do this, the next time, it's gonna populate the first name of the contact, okay? So if I save this here and try this again, cool, but first I'm gonna put in the email address. So say it's jesse at parkridge.com. I'm going to type an interview uh, or booked interview and then click tab. And you can see here, it automatically grabbed her name. Now they have to have set up their Gmail account correctly. Some people don't, some people don't put a first and last name with it, or they put some random name with it, but that is a good way to automatically populate your emails. This is actually one of the things that I do when I have these sessions and I send through the follow-up information to them. Okay, so it's a really good tool. I strongly recommend it, particularly for Gmail users, obviously with that Chrome extension, saves you time. You can even go as far as to add in a subject line and even CC other emails in as well. You can scroll down to show more fields. You can choose the subject to looking forward to our interview and you can even BCC and other people as well. Okay, so it automatically happens. So then if we try that again as our last run through here, Let's do this one more time, booked, interview, and then click tab. You can see that I've got my email address also CC'd in, I've got the subject line created, and I've got that first name variable in there too. So it saves a huge amount of time. And to put in perspective how much time I have saved, uh, I checked this morning, and this is in May 2020, I have saved nine days, 10 hours, and 26 minutes through how many times I've actually had that pop up. So it saves me from having to write those emails out. If you were to calculate how many times I would have written out the emails that I've sent using Georgius, it would add up to uh, about nine and a half days. So fair amount of time. This is really beneficial for reach out messages, for follow-up messages, for anything that you send on a regular basis, whether it's reporting, anything like that, I really recommend it. And it's free. You don't have to create a account unless you really want to, um, but extremely valuable tool. 
Awesome. So for those that are online, I'm going to leave this open to more of a Q&A about the topics that we've covered uh, up to this point. Uh, for those of you that are going to watch this in the future as a recording, because I'm recording it today, I uh, hope you have a fantastic rest of the day and reach out to our support team for any questions. So I'm going to turn the recording off now. And for those that are on live, feel free to fire away any 